welcome to our next Wandering Walks of Wonder adventure. This time we're headed to Minnesota to the small city of Faribault. Faribault has a population of about 23,000 and is located about 25 minutes south of the twin cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis. Our walk begins in front of the Thomas Scott Buckham Memorial Library. The public library system in Faribault dates back to 1897 when the first library was built and housed in the City Hall building. Mrs. Anna Buckham gave the Thomas Scott Buckham Memorial Library building to the city of Faribault in memory of her husband. The building was completed in July of 1930. There are several Greek themes in the building because Buckham was an avid reader and scholar of Greek literature. There's a stained glass, well built, uh, stained glass window in the building's tower, as well as several Greek murals that you can see inside the building. Most of our walk today is going to take da place in downtown Faribault today. This is a historic commercial district that has remarkably well-preserved buildings from the late 19th century and early 20th century. All of the buildings in the, in the district were constructed between 1870 and 1900 and they provide a visible link to Faribault's period of great commercial development and economic independence. Faribault's strategic location between several major 19th century cities in southern Minnesota contributed, contributed greatly to its commercial and industrial growth and gained for it a reputation as a regionally important trade and manufacturing center. As the railroad links to Minneapolis and St. Paul, Owatonna, Albert Lee, Mankato, and Red, Red Ring were completed during the mid to late 19th century, Faribault's economy flourished. A four-block business district grew along Central Avenue that supported the commercial needs of the growing population. This block that we're going to be walking through is one of the best preserved segments of the business districts that developed during that period. Along this way, we would see what were once really cool 19th century commercial establishments, including such things as hardware stores, clothing stores, Drug stores, books and stationery stores, men's and women clothing, dry goods, a harness shop, and confectionaries, as well as several office facilities for professionals that usually took place along the second and third floor of each of the buildings. Also along this block were many buildings that were used by many of the, of the uh, professional societies in, in Faribault, including the Masons and the Scandinavian Harmonia Society. The area around Faribault was originally inhabited by the, by the Dakota people. In 1826, a French-Canadian fur trader named Alexander Faribault established a trading post at the confluence of the Cannon and Strait Rivers. The town of Faribault was platted in 1852 and named after Alexander Faribault. Faribault grew rapidly in the 1850s and 1860s. The city was a major center for the milling industry and also had a large number of manufacturing and agricultural businesses. Faribault was also home to a number of educational institutions including St. Mary's School, a private boarding school for boys. 
In the late 19th century, Faribault became a center for the textile industry. The city's woolen mills were some of the largest in the country. Faribault also became a major producer of furniture and other manufactured goods. During the 20th century, uh, Faribault's economy declined as the milling and textile industries also declined throughout the nation. However, the city has made comeback in the, in the more recent years thanks to a growing economy and a strong commitment to historic preservation, which you can see by the, the extraordinary upkeep of the buildings we see in the downtown area. It's also become a popular tourist attraction thanks to the downtown area, has several museums, and again, only about half an hour south of the Twin Cities.
Fairbo is also known as being the place where the Tilt-A-Whirl Carnival ride was invented. Uh, in case you're not aware, and you will actually see a few of the old Tilt-A-Whirl cars as we go through the downtown area. Take a look for those as we go along. That, it's a ride that's it's a flat ride similar to what was called the Wallitzer in Europe. Uh, it was a ride designed for commercial use at amusement parks, fairs, and carnivals. If you're not familiar with the ride, it's kind of a seven... Uh, a ride that has seven freely spinning cars usually has three or four passengers in each car and they kind of rotate around the platform and move up and down and spin around usually it's the weight of these passengers that kind of controls some of the spinning motion of the car Herbert Seldner invented the tilt a whirl in 1926 here in Faribault in 1927, the first 14 Tilt-A-Whirls were built in Seldner's basement and in his backyard. Seldner Manufacturing opened its first uh, factory in Faribault, and the ride debuted at the Minnesota State Fair. More than a thousand rides were eventually built. Some of the rides produced in the 1940s and 1950s are still in operation today. The earliest Tilt-A-Whirls were constructed of wood, powered by gas motors, and featured nine cap cars. Today's modern Tilt-A-Whirls are, are constructed of steel, aluminum, and fiber gas, glass, and are powered by seven electric motors, and each of the rides has seven cars. In 1995, Tova Seldner took over Seldner Manufacturing after the loss of her husband Bruce, and her daughter joined in 1998, and the two of them ran the business together. Today, the rides are manufactured by Larson International that's located in Plainview, Texas. Mm-hmm.
We're now coming up on the Cathedral of Our Merciful Savior. This cathedral was built in Faribault uh, in 1869 and is the oldest cathedral in Minnesota. It was the first church in the Episcopal Church in the United States of America designed as a cathedral. The architect was James Renwick Jr., who also designed St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, the Smithsonian Institution Building in Washington, D.C., and a very similar church, the Christ Church by the Sea in Cologne, Panama. On August 10, 1979, the cathedral was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Our Merciful Savior was founded by Bishop Henry Benjamin Whipple, who is buried beneath the altar. In 1941, St. Mark's Episcopal Cathedral in Minneapolis was dedicated as the seat of the Bishop for the Episcopal Diocese of Minnesota, but the Cathedral of Our Merciful Savior retains its status as a full cathedral as well.